Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, I'm Chris and I am a doctor training in dermatology based in west of Scotland in the UK. And on this channel, I share videos on dermatology, medicine, as well as my life in the UK as a foreign graduate. So recently, I've been asked by some people to make videos on various skin conditions um, that people commonly have. And I, saw, and I thought to myself, why don't I try to make a video each week as much as I can on these skin conditions? What they are exactly, what are the myths um, that we need to debunk, and also what treatments are available and the things we do in dermatology for them. Now, I just want to make a disclaimer. I am by no means a consultant dermatologist yet. I'm still a, a doctor training in dermatology. And so um, all the information that I'm going to share with you guys are information I got from the latest research evidence and um, op expert opinions and they are by no means um, a substitute for medical advice. And also along the way in this video I'm going to mention some of the skincare products that I've used and I liked and this video is not sponsored in any way by any of these drug companies and they are simply my own personal um, favourite items. And in this video, I am going to talk about one very common skin condition that a lot of people have, and this is called keratosis pilaris. So what is keratosis pilaris? So keratosis pilaris is a very common skin condition um, that is characterized by rough bumps on the skin. The word keratosis basically means having too much keratin, and keratin is the protein that makes up the skin layer and protects the skin from things like infection and other harmful substances. Pilaris comes from the Latin word meaning hair. So the term keratosis pilaris basically means having a buildup of skin in the hair follicles. And they can appear as goosebumps or chicken skin according to some people. They typically appear in young children and young adults and typically present on the outer arms, the thighs, but can also present on the cheeks and the buttocks. So keratosis pilaris usually don't cause any symptoms, but to some people can be quite rough to touch and can look unsightly in appearance as well. They are totally harmless and do not cause any long-term health complications. They are also not infectious, which means you can't pass on um, keratosis pilaris to the people around you. Unfortunately, they can't be cured, um, but they typically improve as you get older. So what exactly causes keratosis pilaris or KP in short? Now we don't know exactly what causes KP, but we do know certain gene mutations such as mutations in the filaggrin gene is linked with KP. Filaggrin gene basically um, encodes for proteins that are building blocks making up the skin layer. We also know from research that KP is an autosomal dominant condition. Now you may ask, what exactly is autosomal dominant? So this means that there is one in two chance that each child of an affected parent will inherit the skin condition. KP is also associated with other skin conditions such as atopic eczema, which is a very common itchy skin condition associated with hay fever and asthma. KP is also associated with a rarer a skin condition called ectiosis vulgaris. There have also been case reports linking KP with obesity and diabetes as well. Now, KP is generally worse during winter months, predominantly because um, the skin tends to get dry and irritated more easily. There have also been case reports where KP becomes more prominent during pregnancy as well. So what are the different subtypes or variants of KP? To start with, we have this subtype called keratosis pilaris rubra. And as the name suggests, rubra meaning red, we have red bumps on the skin affecting the forehead, cheeks, and even the neck. You may have also come across or seen this condition without knowing the uh, medical term for this. And this is called, give me two seconds, let me have a look, atrophoderma vermiculatum. And this presents as honeycombed pattern or cheeks, typically seen in young children. So how do we treat KP? Well, first and foremost, you don't necessarily need to treat this skin condition if it's not causing you any uh, problems or symptoms. And the good news about KP is that it generally improves with age, even without any treatment. However, there are a few things that we can do uh, in order to reduce the appearance of KP 
if it is bothering you. So number one, avoid any harsh soaps or chemicals as they can dry your skin out and make the appearance look more prominent. There are many gentle cleansers and mouth soaps that are on the market for you to buy and try. My personal favourites are the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser, which is very gentle to the skin, and a product that I'm using just now, which I mentioned in my previous video, and it is a facial cleanser by the brand Simple. Next, avoid any hot showers, long hot baths, as they can make the skin look worse. You can also use moisturizers with high urea content, so over 10% urea, as urea can help soften the rough bumps on the skin and make it less um, rough to touch. Some examples include the CeraVe as a smoothing cream, as well as the Eucerin Intensive Lotion, and they both contain 10% urea. You may wish to also get an exfoliating sponge that you can use during shower time, bath time, and what they do is they gently exfoliate the excess skin uh, on the hair follicles. Another way is to use topical keratolytics, which are active ingredients found in various skincare products to remove the excess skin layer on the skin surface. And these include products containing things like salicylic acid, and lactic acid. So they are active ingredients that are found in various skincare products on the market. And um, just remember to check the ingredient list to make sure that the products you're buying contain these active ingredients, as these are the active ingredients that will um, exfoliate the skin, so to say. And again, products include the CeraVe range, as well as the Ameliorate Smoothing Body Exfoliant. Lastly, you can consider trying products containing retinoids, which are very good at um, blocking any clogged pores. And retinoid itself is a whole new topic, and we can talk so much about it in a separate video. It comes in different strengths and names, and can be quite confusing to people who are not familiar. Typically in the UK, for higher strengths retinoids, such as Adapalene 0.1%, you will need to get this prescribed by a healthcare professional like your GP or a dermatologist. And this is very different for places like the US, where you can buy this over the counter. But don't fret, you can actually get lower strength retinoids um, over the counter in the UK as well. In severe cases where KP doesn't respond to topical treatments, there are various other treatments available. And these include things like lasers such as pulse dye laser, as well as microabrasion. However, make sure you seek out a fully qualified healthcare professional who knows what they are doing, as it is your skin that you are dealing with. Very, very rarely, clinicians can also prescribe a systemic retinoid, which is a tablet form of retinoid, and the most common one is roaccutane, also known as isotretinoin, and this is typically used to treat acne vulgaris, um, though personally, I have not actually seen it done for KP. Thank you for watching this video. I certainly enjoyed making this video and researching on this topic. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. And if you do so, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below to tell me how I'm doing. And also provide suggestions for future videos as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and see you next time. Bye!